captain, you've lost so much weight. That's what flying back from Los Angeles with 17 hours worth of jet lag does to you. My God. This time yesterday, I was in Los Angeles, uh, just about to fly back from the NAMM show, and I got in this morning with my diary saying that uh, we were shooting videos uh, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and Rob phoned me at 11 going, where are you? I'm, I'm, uh, I'm right. Uh, Actually, it was more like a... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so here I am. Here I am. All primed for ready. caffeine. I've had seven coffees, a Red Bull, uh, some Lucasade, and some cough medicine. And we're here to talk All about... in one cup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the cornucopia. Uh, so... Hang on a second. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, for, the, for the love of West Ham and the god lols, uh, we're also going to demonstrate some of the pedals that Kurt used. Do you know the story behind this West Ham cabinet? I'd like to know the story behind there's, this West Ham there's cabinet. There's not really a story as such, other than the fact that, Mar I'll give Marshall a plug now, Marshall are now offering on the front of any of their UK made uh, products, yeah. combos and, and cabs, uh, you can send in your own photograph or your own band logo or something like that. Really? And have it screen printed onto the front of your uh, Marshall product. And wow. it's something crazy cheap, like it's only about 20 pounds or something more than the normal. That's awesome. Would cost. So there you go. I, I had a West Ham one, as I'm a, a, I am a, a die-hard West Ham fan. Um, and uh, but you can have whatever you like. You have your band logo or pictures of your dog or whatever you want on there. Ex-wife. Oh, yeah. Jenna Jameson. Jenna, Jenna Jameson. Jameson. I'd have Taylor Rain. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have Taylor Rain taking a one by twelve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the anyway. input. The input, Jack. No. Anyway. Uh, let's not go there. Did they used to make one by twelve Marshall cabs without an input, Jack? I've had a flashback. <laughs> so we brought along it's some. We bought all gone arrows. We we bro fist. We brought along some Kurt Cobain pedals yes. to well, we, demonstrate. Uh, according to, you know, if I remember rightly, that the, the, all the Cobain stuff was done using some boogie uh, sort of boogie. Studio point two two. That's it, and uh, a Boss Turbo Distortion. Well, just DS one, and then later a DS two. So we've got a Boss DS two here, and uh, an Electro Harmonic Small Clone. Um, these are amazing value pedals, you know, these are like 50 quid each or something like that. Yeah. Um, we're using an orange head just because that's what Rob had in his car and we just thought, you know what, it's not too bad a kind of a, a sound. I'll put it back in my car afterwards. Um, and uh, yeah, so you can get some very authentic kind of Kurt Cobain sounds. Obviously, the most authentic thing we've got here of Kurt's is uh, his tribute, Jaguar. Rawr! Um, that uh, Fender have done as a limited run for sort of 2011 and 2012. So check these out on the Anderson's website. Um, but anyway, let's hear some Kurt. <laughs> Sound, isn't yeah, it? it is good. Sound. Quite surprisingly easy to get a good Kurt Cobain sound. Like Brian May is one end of the spectrum, oh. Kurt Cobain is the other end of the spectrum, isn't he? Yeah, well, I guess Kurt was all about the riffs, wasn't it? And the sound just kind of uh, came from that. Who was the producer of that Nevermind album? Butch, well, Butch, Butch Well. Butch Vigo, Because that is it. two producers that worked on that. I just because the original track, I think. Because they were some monster, monster guitar sounds on that yeah, album, yeah. weren't they? Huge yeah. guitar sounds. Triple tracked. Um, so, oh excuse me, I just did a little burp there. That's well, how cool. much does the small clone retail for at andertons.co.uk? 56 pounds. 56 English Imperial credits of the realm. Yes. 
That's a bargain. Uh, and it basically, it's a very simple pedal. It's it's, it's one of my, uh, it's one of the um, Electro Harmonix pedals that still comes in the sort of pretty much the same casing that it did uh, when it was first introduced many moons ago. Uh, so it's a real vintage looking pedal. We've got a, a single uh, switch on here that adjusts the type of depth uh, and then um, a rate control. So how fast does it flutter? A rate uh, control? Uh, uh, yeah, that's right. I'll just show you what I mean. If you play a chord. <laughs> So, I, I, so much gain. Well, because I wanted to just have a shred, <laughs> I just I thought I'm just gonna have a shred anyway, and so I set it up to Super Doom. But now I'll, I'll play that chord you wanted. So I can. Fever, didn't yeah, you? excuse me while I periodically die during this video. Um, so it's a real simple pedal to use. Um, DS2 is essentially the same as a DS1, but with a turbo switch in it. How much gain can you get from a DS2? Uh, well, do you know what? Interestingly, when I was reading the Kurt Cobain blog, he, he didn't use the turbo. He just used the, the, the sort of the regular mode full on. But I'll put it into turbo mode. And okay, hit me. <laughs> Have you played all the sort of um, Teen Spirit shit? You can't. Like <laughs> you can't really play stuff. Just the thing with YouTube nowadays yeah. is that you can't really cover an artist. You can do a little kind of hint here and a hint there. And we did a bit of Polly and a bit of. Um, sorry, you did a bit of Polly and a bit of uh, Teen Spirit, etc. We did some Teen Spirit. We did, did we did stuff in the style of. Uh, I think that's mm. that's what we did. Um, okay, cool. Any similarity to likeness or uh, thing is entirely incidental and coincidental, and nothing to do with Kurt. On the tip of Kurt Cobain, got some new Fender guitars. We have indeed. Um, yeah, but obviously Fender have been doing a, 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 a quite a, a homage to uh, Mr. Cobain recently. And uh, following up from his very, very cool tribute Jaguar, we have some uber cool new Mustang guitars. Sally! Yeah, some Mustang Sallys. Um, three cool colours. Blue. Kind of nice dark blue one with the uh, Go Faster stripe on it. Sa salmon? Orange? Uh, what's that, like a Fiesta Red or a Salmon Fia Pink? Or? <laughs> Fiesta Red. I think that was a... a, a oh, that, was a go that was something going faster. Because it had a stripe on it. Fiesta, Fiesta red. red. And then... What's that, uh, Sonic Blue? Sonic. It's probably my favourite uh, one with the red no, sort just of tortoise shell that scratch plate. Those must be Fender strings. Yeah. And they've got the coloured ends mm. like... Maybe they're not. Oh. But they're not the same colour as the strings that... Sorry, oh, this put, one hasn't. Don't put this on camera, but I noticed that with the bass. Yes. Yeah, I've just returned. Fender have started doing colour lens on their strings. This one isn't. They're what? Fender 
Fender NPS strings. Fender NPS strings. Mm. I didn't know that. That's cool. What does that NPS stand for? Non I can't think of anything that it could stand for. But it's interesting that Fender started manufacturing strings with coloured ends. I like that. Who'd have thought? What an no, original because idea. Because my favourite brand of strings, <laughs> Diodario, do the same thing and have done for many years. Is it Diodario or just Diodario? You know what? It's just Diodario. No, it's just Diodario. Is it Diodario? It's D apostrophe Adario. So therefore it's just Diodario. I think we should have a, a discussion about this in the comment section below. If you think it's Diodario, Dadario, or Dario. I don't like orange, I said blue one. Chocolate biscuit, sir. But I'm aware, I've got a mint one. <laughs> we're, having a, <laughs> we're having an 80s uh, time with our club biscuits because should I. Should we sing it? Come yeah. on. Two, if you, three, four. If you like a lot of chocolate on your biscuit, join the club. <laughs> and what we got here is the ideal club warning. No, uh, warning. no, don't put it on there. You'll melt it. Won't you? No, no, it's all safely contained inside. It's like when you get those those chewy wafers you put on top of a coffee cup. <laughs> but this is a club warming, clearly mechanism. And in about two minutes, that'll be toasty and perfect. <laughs> so what's great about these guitars? Pretty much everything. Short scale. So nice hoopy rubber band scoopy tones. I mean, let, let's talk about that because that's something that um, guys, if you've never played a short snail, uh, can you, can you, can you never me? played a short snail, you <laughs> might find that it's issue laden. Um, if you've never played a, a short scale guitar, if all your guitars you've ever owned have been Strats or Tellys or Les Pauls or Ibanezes or something, um, you're prepared to be kind of um, sort of. Uh, find a, a guitar very, very different to play. So the, the, the Mustang is, is significantly shorter scale. So when we talk about scale, we're talking about the length from the bridge to the nut here. Um, and it's, uh, I better get the stats from Pablo here, but it's about an inch and a half or an inch shorter than, inch and a half, uh, inch and a half shorter than uh, a regular strap. So when it's tuned using the same gauge of string to the same pitch, all your kind of bends and everything are much looser than a regular uh, Strat or Telecaster would feel. And it gives the sound, as well as it being very different to play, it gives the sound, uh, I've always called it like a rubber bandy kind of twangy. Imagine yeah. those old sort of skiffle bands. Well, Paul Reed where... Smith calls it hoopy, doesn't he? Oh, okay. Hoopy sound. I kind of like that term. A bit like my cough. Yes. Of, um... Well, the other thing is that if you like the tone of thicker strings, you could use like an 11 gauge yep. you know, in standard, then it's playable. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, so that's the first thing that you really notice about the Mustang, and it gives it a very unique kind of characteristic sound. Um, these are made in Japan, which is, which is kind of cool, because you don't get an awful lot of fenders nowadays made in Japan. That's interesting, actually. So this is the more affordable version. Yes. And it's made in Japan. Yes. And the slightly higher end was made in Mexico. Yeah. Well, they've, they've just started doing, a, well, I say just, over the last couple of years with the Road Worn series. Now, they, they have the facility in Mexico to, to distress uh, all the finishing on a guitar, mm. uh, like they do in the custom shop sort of relicking. Um, but these have come out of Japan. Uh, they are different. It is a Kurt Cobain um, sort of modded Mustang. So we've got the humbucker in the bridge here. So we've got a Seymour Duncan JB humbucker, as well as the single coil at the neck. Um, as I said, these super cool kind of colors. Um, Go faster, Stripe. I was, I was reading. Um, <laughs> Uh, you, you can basically, if you go back and watch some old uh, Nirvana videos, you will see him playing each one of these colours at different times during his kind of, you know, Nirvana days. Um, uh, do you know what? Uh, the, the one thing that really hit me was how incredibly versatile it was with just the simple switching at the top. Really interesting sort of phasing options and situations going on there. Yeah, it's a throwback to, again, the sort of switching that was used on um, the Jazzmaster and the Jaguars in the 60s. Uh, and essentially, eat, we have two pickups. Um, well, let's go through them now. I'll, I'll okay. play the tone so we can have it. I'll, I'll back off some of the, the dirt, and then I'll, we'll talk you through it. So we'll start off with just the humbucker. So in the central position, it turns the pickup off. So this is just humbucker goodness right back. So middle position turns it off. Nothing comes out. Push it forward. It's exactly the same sound, but the interesting thing comes in when you engage the single coil and start blending the two. So we'll go back to regular humbucker. And I'll pull the single coil down and on. And suddenly you get Telecaster sounds. Turn it off. It's a 
massive difference, which is well, awesome. The whole point of, of the, the two positions for each pickup is to just do with the way they're wired. So essentially, we're, we're sort of reversing the polarity of the way the pickups are wired. Now, as Rob will show you on the single coil on the front here, if we just have that on its own, um, there is no, if you're just using the single coil on its own, there's no difference to the tone, whether it's wired one way or the other. So we're... So the only, the re, the, the, where the difference comes in is when you use it in conjunction with the other pickup and then you start playing with the phasing. So whether or not you're hearing pickups that are wired in phase or out of yeah, phase. Yeah, so here's back. It's forward. Here's just the humbucker. And then again, putting that forward. All the thinner sounds are where you're hearing the two pickups have some sort of phase cancellation. Uh, so they're almost working against each other and you're getting those thinner sounds and, and the fatter sounds are when the two pickups are kind of working together. Yeah, it's really um, versatile. I mean, yeah. the, the thing is, being devil's advocate, these switches are a little bit, I mean, to me, that it's not particularly easy on the yeah. fly to get it right into the hole. And there is a click. But it's it's not a very like a, a very authoritative I don't think confident it's, click. You wouldn't use it like a strap thing where you know sort of halfway through you'd do a solo and you whack the strap. I think you would go for the it would be sort of song appropriate. So for the song you'd have it in one setting. Yeah, or which is I mean I, I but the thing is it's a shame because the tones you get are fantastic. Yeah. If it was a little bit easier to get them on the fly, that would make it even more versatile. So that's my devil's we're, advocate side of me coming through there. We've also got these kind of insanely basic trim systems on oh, here. I've never ever seen a trim system um, like it. And it's annoying because uh, I forgot to put the tremolo arm in the bag, so it's I'll like do my best to explain it to you. It's essentially got like a steel, almost like the sort of slide that you'd see a, a, a lap steel guitar player sort of using, uh, which the strings are strung through. So the, str the, the string goes the string kind of goes in this way and is wrapped around underneath and I, and I guess depending on you could probably wrap it around over the top if you wanted to get a different kind of sound but it then it wraps around comes over the bridge and the trem arm would kind of wobble this yeah we can, sort of we can replicate it forward. So it's a really kind of, it's almost, um, I don't know, Bigsby-esque, I suppose. In the, it, you know, it's, uh, I don't know how stable these are for well, tuning. I, I was going to say, very. it seems more stable than a Bigsby to me. Really? It, there's not a lot, you don't get a lot of, it's like a really subtle vibrato technique. That was me doing subtle there's, vibrato. There doesn't appear to be an, a great deal to, to sort of, no, uh, how that's it, it return really, to where really it was. Subtle. Just kind of, because it is, I suppose. Yeah. I anyway, so we're having a bit of fun with these, uh, and I guess we'll just, play some tunes for you. I've got the, the small clone chorus and the Boss DS2 here, so we're gonna try and get some, again, some Cobain-y kind of tones. And, and just the, they all strum. retail for 699, oh, sorry, 766? Se yeah, I think so, they're all, uh, doesn't, the, the three colors are the same price. Um, I don't know how long these are gonna be in the Fender catalog for, there seems to be a lot of love for Kurt Cobain and a lot of love for all the sort of Jaguars and Mustangs. Is there a reason, is it an home. anniversary or something? Or? It was the 50th anniversary of the Jaguar and the Jazzmaster last ah. year, 2011. Or, no, sorry, this year, 2012. <coughs> so, but I, again, I'm not sure what the Kurt Cobain thing is, I guess because he's cool and... Uh, and Fender had a guitar he was playing. Yeah. Cool. Kurt Cobain died 18 years ago, apparently. And if you're watching this video in 18 years' time, it's 36. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, I must admit, you just that's when you realise, you just think, where have the last 20 years of my life gone? I actually <laughs> vaguely remember yeah, that. Yeah, right. Well, not vaguely, I massively remember that whole yeah. Nirvana scene and just yeah. think, did it, is it nice now that it's sort of slightly above room temperature because it's been sitting on a Actually, it's disgusting now, <laughs> room temperature. But um, for the sake of the gag, it's amazing. <laughs> mm. 